Well, here we are taking over the Edmonton Oilers at long last. Don't I don't think I've ever touched this team in any franchise mode on stream or at any point on this channel. I be, I may have, but I actually do not remember. But this is the first time, and what what better time could it be than <laughs> them getting absolutely demolished in the playoffs? And all the speculation, how much longer is Connor McDavid going to put up with this? Who knows? Not quite as sexy as the Jack Eichel demanding a trade thing, but I really wanted to tackle that. Um, the uh, the voting poll said otherwise, but I might still, I might, I might, I might game the system a little bit and, uh, and, and do Buffalo at some point anyway, maybe on a stream or something. Now, no promises yet, but OBS does have a, a new system that makes uh, using... Well, my streaming and uploading computer, which is a Mac, and makes it much more viable on Mac, which does open up the possibility for the YouTube streams to come back within the new content creator system that they have created where I can't really stream in the old way I wanted to. I mean, I, I kind of can, but it's I can't use fucking like any of the features uh, that YouTube has designed. Anyway, um, that's enough of that. We're here to take over. The Edmonton Oilers. So I'll do the, all the basic kind of stuff. We got the stats set up as they usually are. Um, superstar, obviously. Trade difficulty on hard. Uh, fully healed for my notifications. Uh, Fog of War off because that's still garbage. Where the hell is trade? Oh, it's way down here. Anyway, Sim Engine scoring on medium, but you crank up the. Uh, uh, God damn it! What are the the attribute effects that helps create better scoring, but also decent, you know, more realistic goaltending stats. Um, I'm setting the draft qualities to high in this because that I just find that fun to have those, you know, those players pop up like the the Silas Blaines and and stuff like that who absolutely, you know, become those new generational talents because the ones that are you know supposedly to become generation generational talents within the next couple of years. Well, really only Bedard. Shane Wright's very good, but I wouldn't call him generational by any means. I, you know, Bedard's not even generational either yet. Let's be real. He's gonna lot, not more Sam's franchise guys, but who can actually be, you know, become franchise guys because you know Bedard and the way he's designed in this game, not really doesn't really ever become that. I mean, I could adjust him, but eh, it, it's whatever. I, I don't mess with rosters anymore since EA has decided. That we're going to delete all your custom rosters whenever we feel like it. Anyway, this is what we have to work with. And good gracious. It is a two-man team with a pretty good 2C with zero support. I mean, look at the support. Good lord. Cahoon, James Neal. I mean, Yamamoto, solid and all. But, I mean, this is what we got to work with. I don't even know where to start. It's a bad team. But here's the thing. You can't, re you can't rebuild. You got... McDavid and Dreisaitl who are about to enter their prime. There's no, there's really no room to rebuild. Maybe you could, you know, have a, maybe you, you suck this first year. I don't know. I, I feel like these two guys should carry you into the playoffs and they do in real life. But the thing is, this is a video game and don't know if that'll happen. And here's the thing. So many, I don't even know who trade, if there's really any realistic trade assets. It's honestly hard to kind of imagine. And we're right up against the cap too. Not a whole lot of cash. You don't get rid. You don't. None of these guys you get rid of. Nuge. You don't. I mean, you can maybe get rid of Nuge, but why? Because he's a solid two C. I don't know. Is he listed as two? Oh, he's actually a two way guy. I don't like two way two way guys. Maybe you could trade Nuge. It is on an expiring deal. So man, maybe Nuge is a guy you can uh, trade. Barry's also on a one year deal. 29 years old is he a guy that's coming back i mean could you even afford him maybe there's a couple guys you could shift out but you know what do you get from him? at this point picks might not work so yeah i'm not i'm actually not too sure there's there's a lot we could do i mean 29 for barry that's I, the point is to sort of win now. You, I'm not. You don't rebuild, but maybe you tr maybe try to reload. And this is years technically already in the books, so we can we can we have a chance here, an, an interesting chance to sort of alter the timeline since this year has obviously already happened. We have a chance to maybe do what the Oilers needed to do instead of 
pushing for the playoffs and getting eliminated quickly because they literally are a two-man team. We have a chance to alter the course of history. A unique chance, so perhaps that's something we should actually consider doing. They do have some other decent prospects here and there, Brober, uh, Lavoie, but, you know, no, no elites, elite kind of guys here. They got, you know, the 20 million, or sorry, 21 million invested in these two players, which is obviously worth it. It's a sniper and a playmaker. You need a solid power forward with them, obviously. I wonder if putting, like, just for this year, putting James Neal on that line would, would do anything great. But maybe still make some changes here and there. The thing is, if you if you trade a Barry and a Nuge... Can you get back enough in the way of draft capital to make it worth it? That's kind of what I'm wondering right here. Is if you can really, yeah, <laughs> their goaltender situation. Oh, boy. I mean, realistically, Mike Smith, Smith was, was a freaking god, but this is, you know, what is even? They're hoarding all the mediocre goaltenders. No wonder people struggling to find backups in those first year. They got Stalock, Koskinen, and Smith. They got three backups. Oh, goodness. All right. Um, great that that Koskinen deal will be up soon. That helps glitch some money at the table. You could probably shift that out. You could free up some. But here's the thing. There's no fix for this season. That that's the that's that's the reason that I'm thinking of doing what management couldn't perhaps in real life is sort of trying to reload here in this first year, try to gain something, maybe try to draft some players when this draft is going to be you know pretty damn deep in this first year, at least throughout the first round. If you can get into that top ten, you're getting an elite. Maybe you get lucky. It is the Oilers after all. Ah, can we trade for Taylor Hall? Yeah, let's trade for Taylor Hall and <laughs> get it, win ourselves the draft lottery. Yeah, there you go. It's a hack that works 100% of the time. Anyway, there's also Evan Bouchard. Ooh, what the fuck? They downed him to a medium top four. Okay, EA. I'm not too sure I agree with that, but all right. A little early to be pulling the plug here, isn't it, Vancouver? Shout out to Troy Stetcher. Um, goodness. That's kind of rough. I might actually make some changes. Pooley RV, in my opinion, is kind of better than this. So that's another thing I might actually do is make a few a few roster changes, which I usually wouldn't do. But I'm looking at this and I completely, like, from a moral standpoint, disagree with some of these things. This is this is the newest roster update, by the way. So I don't even I was planning on maybe simming at least part of the year here, but I might actually make this actually an old like a what I used to do, almost an old school intro video where we I'll try to decide what we're going to do. I, I know it might not be the most exciting thing ever, not the sexiest when we're going to be making some trades, but we can kind of, since we're, we're going with the theme of altering time, we can see what trades would work, see what we could get back for things. I can make the trades, and then we can kind of go back in time, like, you know, create an endless loop of uh, going back in time. Since we're already back in time, we go back in time again, really altering the continuum. Um, just to see what trades could be viable and then we can actually s decide if we actually are going to pull the trigger on it in the really real world. But yeah. I, I'm i sorry. Pulley RV in my opinion is better than this. Absolutely. At least overall. I, I mean, low elite is not unfair, but I'm sorry. 79 overall is way, way too low for this guy. I, 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 he had a fucking pretty decent year in my opinion. And he just continues to get hate from this league and obviously EA. And honestly from his own goddamn team. Management. Absolutely mishandled this kid. Anyway, um, enough, enough whining about that. Okay, well, yeah, I... I, I definitely think I'm going to want to make some roster changes. I usually would look at things, but as I said, because of the rosters are so screwed up, I haven't bothered with custom rosters. But taking a look at this, you guys can let me know if, if I'm... I mean, I'd, I'd ask Oilers fans, but you guys are going to say everyone should be elite. <laughs> so I'm going to ask some of the, uh, you know, as many 
objective people as me. I'm looking at Bouchard. I think that potential should be. I think he's fine where he is overall wise. But on, I I don't know why they changed him from high top four to medium top four. I still think he's a high 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 top four. Like he's a higher end upside top four. He ain't a top two future. I'm sorry, Oilers fans, but he's not. But he is solid, and I think he could be a guy who plays those you know in those middle pairings. I I really don't understand why he was changed to a medium top four. And Pooley-Arvey, I think, needs to be cranked up overall-wise. Other than that, um, everything else seems relatively fair. Let's let's take a take a gander at some of those trade possibilities I was thinking of. And actually, before we do that, I want to see that whole James Neal scenario that I was thinking of. Because Yamamoto should be playing second line. Our second line will be... If we can get some kind of a spot filler, though... Because we got a playmaker. If there's like some kind of a. See, we get plus three chemistry if we do this. James Neal could get absolutely carried. Oh my god, that contract. <laughs> he can get absolutely. Ah, fuck it. Absolutely carried. Get him some stat growth and ship him the hell out. <laughs> there we go. That, that's 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 one of our. I think I think that's a goal I'm going to stick to no matter what. Put James Neal on this first line with Drysaddle McDavid. Get him some stat growth and trade him ASAP. So that, that could be a, like a draft move. We could spend this one year, like have a one year where we just absolutely try to go ham, pick up as many good draft picks as possible for a supporting crew for McDavid Drive. They're still young enough where if you get those guys who are close to NHL ready, you can insert them into the lineup quick enough. And, you know, the, the, here's the, like those mid, mid, mid round steals for medium elites, those won't help us. Even some of the late first medium elites, like three year ETA guys, they won't help us. We need to get our hands on some of those. Almost NHL ready guys, if, if if at all possible, which I'm hoping will be possible. I do like Yamamoto. I think he's going to be a solid second liner. I mean, Cal Turris could the no, he can't. Good lord. <laughs> I don't mind Larson. I, I think Larson's actually kind of solid in this game. Coaching wise, doesn't seem to be a huge help. But yeah, so definitely, I think we we go with this as a top line because all you all you really needs McDavid, Drysaddle, Neil can be there. He'll get 60, 70 points playing with those guys. If he doesn't, that'd be sad. And then, especially if we're gonna have a second line, that ain't gonna be too good. So Yamamoto's gonna probably struggle a bit. But if we have him on the top power play, which we will, we're gonna be a one line team. But the thing is, unlike real real management, we're going to be a one-line team while also getting tangible assets for the very near future. I think that should be the goal here in this year. So, with that being said, let's take a look at what some of the... I know trading Nuge seems kind of silly, but I really don't... I don't and again, I, honestly, I don't think I would change his player type. I think Nuge is a two-way center. It's just, unfortunately, in this game... EA absolutely despises two-way players in chemistry, and you actually do need chem. It's not the end-all, be-all, but you do need chem do need chemistries, and right now two ways are completely not good for that. But the thing about Barry is he's on a tremendous friggin' deal, and I know going back in time you technically just signed him into this deal, but. Eh. There should be a lot of teams interested in picking him up. Although the problem is, is cap space. I haven't seen Philadelphia do tremendous in the first year. I mean, maybe that's something you pick up. Or you might not be able to pick up uh, the pick that you want. Maybe you extend him. Or hold on to him as long as possible. Extend him for a year. See if you could ship him off at the draft. Maybe that's something you do with him. But Nuge... Uh, yeah, it's a tough situation. No matter what. He does want the extension. Larson doesn't, hilariously. But I don't want to trade him. Yamamoto does. You can get him extended, so... Yeah, we can, Yeah, it's the... We couldn't extend Barry till like, around the trade deadline. Huh, curious. Well, let's let's still take a look. You could trade both of them, but I mean, you're not going to get a great pick for that. And that's the thing. You need you, we actually need to target. We can make our own pick maybe that good, but with with two guys like McDavid and Drysaddle, they can still in the simulation drag us limping into the playoffs. That's obviously an incredibly distinct possibility here. 
But there are quite a few, like, okay. The, the Rangers. I highly doubt they're going to be a playoff team. But getting their first pick is going to be near impossible. Even if you throw Nuge into this deal, which they don't want, it brings them over cap anyway. It's close. They'd have too many skaters. It's tough to make these trades. Spell on trade difficulty hard. Number one. Number two is... Oh, man. Um, just uh, the picks being in, in, in uh, so much higher in value uh, than they have been in the past, so... You're kind of stuck in that uh, predicament of like, yeah, you could trade them for stuff. We could trade them for prospects, but even then, it's you're still not getting what you really, really need out of them. You're almost better served holding on to them. Hmm. And trying to throw them, uh, throw them, you know, onto teams at the draft. And trying to trade for the exact picks that you want. I don't want to do everything like that, obviously. I want to try to... And yeah, that's the thing. You you just improve your own chances. So yeah, we're stuck in such an awkward position. With the assets on hand. I like Nurse. I really, really like Nurse. I don't think he's going anyway, anywhere. Two way or not. Clef Bomb is decent. He's a solid spot filler. Bear... Mm. He's a guy I hold on to. Good lord, why is the chemistry just so rough? <laughs> Got the coach. Oh. You can maybe trade one of the goaltenders. I don't even know, man. That's rough. Well, let's just see. Like, just... What the hell could we get? If, is it even possible to maybe even get... I, not that, you know, we go through with it and hold on to this, but is it even possible? The Sens want both of them. Conservative seller. Obviously, their first isn't going to be on the block. Giving them these two guys does not make them a playoff team. Doubt they even want it give that pick up, obviously. But they have drafted pretty heavy. Probably have to take back two garbage players. It is league approved. So let's just, for shits and giggles, yeah, absolutely not. Woefully insufficient. It's going to be pretty difficult to find I have the Islanders pick. Again, too many players, but at least cap-wise, it's viable. Yeah, this this trade, I can actually see New Jersey Sword making a trade like this. All, only because they already have He Sure Hughes. Well, I mean, giving them another center doesn't exactly help that out, actually. I can see him going for Barry, but then you don't really have the assets to make that work. Unless you did something crazy like taking Subban off their hands. But that's a lot of value that the game is weird about. Well, let's just say. That's closer. It's a lot closer with that. So, I mean, that's sort of a tiny more, tiny bit more viable of an option. But yeah, the Nuge thing doesn't work. Hilariously, that's, oh yeah, it's the doubles. Of course they want centers. That's all they fucking draft and put in the system. Ain't that right, Jacob? Jacob knows all about it. Yeah, LA. Detroit. Nothing really works. Detroit has had terrible, terrible. Just does terrible things in this. Here's the thing with Detroit, though. You could take Franz Nielsen off their hand. Yeah, well. I mean, yeah, you can, technically. I was kind of, you're. Actually, he's a power forward, isn't he? No, oh, he's a two way? Oh, fuck you. I thought he used to be power forward. He might have used to be power forward. But yeah, again, it's Detroit. They don't give up their first. So yeah, you are stuck in a situation where what the assets we want would come from the teams 
That's a lot of cap taken back. Like, that doesn't really... Well, it does kind of... Your take... Well, no, not the Nielsen one, but let's just say... No. It's, again, it's not the woefully insufficient, but it's still not quite in that range. You almost have to hope for a team who's going to suck. Just, but not supposed to suck. Conservative buyer. The defenseman they want. That pick is slightly closer, but even then, yeah. Like, it's... You almost have to get away with only shipping out one, but that's really not workable unless you throw in the second, which they don't have a second from the next year. You know, maybe delve into your firsts. But here's the thing. Your firsts are actually not inflated, which completely sucks in this situation. The game is saying that you're going to be a playoff team, which is... <laughs> you have to trade one of them to maybe inflate the values of that. Then you could... That, that might be something we look into doing. So you know what? Just just to see, I again, since this is all theoretical, and we're not actually gonna really keep any of these moves. Seriously, why the fuck is it their first listed that those that high? It's actually kind of nuts. Let's throw one of these guys in for just anything from a contender. Here's a contending team. Let's say we just go one for one. I'm just trying to make this go through. Okay. So yeah, yeah, best roster. Who cares? Does that, boom, there you go. Okay, so you make a trade like that. Then all of a sudden, your picks for the future shoot up in value. You can use, probably we'll start with like the 23s. You can, yeah, because that has a similar value to the 22. And then it drops way, way farther down on the 24. So you use a pick like this to then combine that for a more viable lottery selection. You then get Neil stat growth and then do that. So let's, let's. Let's explore that option now for a team who's going to be absolute dog crap right now. You throw that. You can even throw in the 22. If, if you want to kind of go all in, then maybe you do the 22 for something as well. Anyway, let's first explore. Buffalo's absolute crap, but will they be? That's the question. Hold up. They're actually probably better than they should be. Uh, you give him a center, who the hell is he playing? Oh, man, yeah, that would, okay, so that, that could theoretically work, but it's Buffalo, so let's not. I'm looking at a team that's done okay with asset management, but should still be bad. So let's, let's, let's say LA. LA would love a guy like Nuge. Let's say we do that. Does that go through when we trade away that pick with inflated value? Not quite. How close can you make it? Let's say you throw in a second, because the seconds would have increased in value. Second from the next year. Yeah, if you throw in a second from the next year, which there shouldn't be a ton of those low elites yet entering, that kind of trade would work. So there's a lot that we could do in theory to sort of put, um, to sort of do what we want to do here. Hmm. You had my curiosity, and now you have my attention. Let me know if this, if this, uh, to you guys, is an interesting, interesting uh, sort of concept here. I'm liking it. I, I, I really am liking it. And then Yamamoto, you could probably get to an incredibly team-friendly deal. Oh yeah, my goodness, look at that. He's, tw I mean, it's only medium top six, but. That price tag that you'll get him to is third liner money. Like absolute third liner money. Even even at this stage. Eh, okay, maybe it's like higher end third line money, but still. Eight years at 4.1 is what you can get Yamamoto at. That's a no-brainer in my opinion. He would be a solid second liner, and you lock him into a very cheap deal. I th I think he grows. Might be tough this first year though, because he won't. But again, you put him on the power play with Mc McJesus and Drysital. Uh, he's gonna get his points. Wow, voice crack. That was more of a voice giving out and just creating it a very very pitiful squeak. But welcome to Sin Videos. If you are new here, you're gonna be, I'm gonna be hiccuping. 
I'm gonna be having voice cracks, which, uh, by the way, never happens in real life. It's, uh, again, it's only when I record. I can't remember the last time I've had hiccups, like, just offhand. It just happens. I turn on the camera, start recording, and hiccups immediately. Anyway, so that, I do want to, you kind of want to hold on to Larson, too. He doesn't want to come back, so you can't get into an exceptionally team-friendly deal, and he wants money, which is funny. The goaltender situation is obviously interesting. These guys are all just spot fillers. Throw them away. Maybe hope that you can get some uh, stack growth out of one of them. But eh, not really. Because you'd have to have a good year now and then you trade them. And you're not looking to have a good year. Although, if you have a good year, you get the picks to where you at least have some uh, value in my Damn, man. So, that's the thing. If you trade either Barry or Nuge up front... I think Barry's the guy you trade for a contender since he's on the older side of things. That would be more in his set of demands. Nuge might just be like, get me the hell out of here. Huh. Yeah. I'm... I'm kind of into that. So... Alright, on the other side of things, let's also check out some of those prospects that we have. Who we think could be... Uh, wait, what am I? Yeah, I was in the system. Um, so, Lavoie. What are you? Center right winger, power four. That's a guy I'm going to hold on to. Yeah, he's he's on pace. He's on pace to actually be serviceable. I don't know if he ever becomes like even second line or whatever, but yeah. Evan Bouchard, we're going to probably adjust. Broberg. I think I'm, I'm fine with him being, you know, well, he was drafted eighth over. Is, should this guy even be a fucking medium top four? What the hell? Maybe even high time. Well, he's more new. I, I'd probably maybe crank up his overall a bit, but eh, he's he's o kind of okay. Eighth overall, especially in, in the draft year he came in, it wasn't a stacked draft. I mean, it was a pretty good draft year. Don't let's not be in. But it wasn't stacked by any means, really. But yeah, maybe he could use an increase either overall wise or potential wise. But 100%, I'm giving Bouchard his high top four back. I really don't know why that was changed. I completely disagree. And Broberg, I'd maybe even make a high top four. Maybe, though. That's like a... That's a maybe. If if anything, I'd bump up his overall. I think he could be, you know, a top four kind of guy. But I also don't want to create too much value internally for this. You know, I kind of... I want to avoid that as much as possible. Creating, you know, value for us to use while well, that maybe, you know, doesn't quite exist. In, in real life scenario, but then again, he was drafted for an eighth overall in that top ten. But so that that that's I would crank up his overall because of that. I think potential wise, where he's drafted compared to what EA generates, medium top four is not you know not bad. But his overall needs to be much higher. By this point, he should be mid seventies, like seventy five kind of minimum. So that's probably something that I would change. So I will actually make some changes here because this is dumb. Uh, I think Skinner's fine where he is. Starter, medium starter, fine. 75, 21, that's fine. I don't really see many issues with this whatsoever. And that's kind of it. But yeah, there's some guys. Obviously, you, you want to extend Yamamoto. Yeah, I wonder if that price tag changes when we make some other things. It might change, but honestly, I still feel like whatever whatever we figure out for him will be good. Whatever happened to Yamamoto's brother, man? Where the hell is he at? What was his brother's name, even? <laughs> I remember that. It was a few years ago, always playing Be a Pro. You played, I think it was the like Seattle Thunderbirds and the Yamamoto brothers would be on, or maybe it was another team. Can't remember, but they'd always be on the team. What the fucking happened to his brother? <laughs> I was like, I just remembered him now. I'm like, where is he? Where is he? All right, I'm Googling it right now. I don't even care. I'm in the middle of a video. Where is the other Yamamoto brother? Uh... I don't, I don't even know his name. Spokane. That was right. Uh, whatever. Keanu. That's right. Keanu and Kai. I should have remembered that. One of the names of the most legitimately nice celebrities on the planet. Where are you? Oh, he's in... Uh, he's playing for McGill, I guess. What was he drafted, though? <laughs> Spending so much time looking at this. How was he really not drafted? 
I cannot see a draft team on here. Maybe I'm not. I'm looking too much anyway. But. <laughs> Oh, spending uh, spending time doing a deep dive into the Yamamoto brothers. What the hell do they like for breakfast? What is their blood types? Are they just susceptible to any sort of genetic disease? Anyway, um, so yeah, this was this was I, again. I was planning on actually doing some simming, but saw some things that threw me off, and have to, and honestly wanted to see what your guys' opinion on on those trades. I know some Oilers fans, you might hate me for getting rid of the Nuge there. Um, or, the, you know, theorizing getting rid of the Nuge. Maybe you can make a compelling argument to change him into a playmaker and have him stick around. I honestly have never viewed him as a playmaker. I think he's a solid player. I think he's a, he is a two-way guy. Unfortunately, in this, you can't make those guys work. And that makes him a trade option for me. Um, age 27, where he's at overall wise, he's kind of, I, he's solid enough. I would use him as a third liner and I, at, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't take third line bucks, plain and simple. He's never really going to take third line bucks in this game. Um, and that's again, sort of crit, you know, more, more critical of him than he, he deserves. He would be a good two C, but you know, in this game, it's much, much different than reality. And in reality, two way players are, are very good and they can really anchor lines and, in this game, EA says, no, son, dangle through entire teams. Don't play defense. If you try to play defense, you'll get punished. We want the highlight reels. We want the, oh, my God, thumbnails. Anyway, so let me know about uh, everything. The roster, uh, mini roster changes, the uh, theoretical trades, and we're going to, we're back in time here. We've went kind of, we're going to go back in time again because everything that we just did here is all in theory. String theory. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I was honestly trying to think of something clever to say, but I'm not as smart as I think I am. So let me know what you guys think about those things. First video, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to plug it. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Look in the description. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. And uh, consider becoming a member because I know I'm not doing the custom players for the memberships right now because of EA doing the thing. When I do start the new uh, stream thing, I'm thinking of having uh, competing franchise modes going on. One that I'm controlling for the most part, which is would be this one. And the second one that you guys, would, well, members for the most part would control. On stream, members would get to uh, draft the players. Members would get to make the trades. So definitely consider uh, becoming a member. Again, I'm, I'm trying to do my best to... Uh, for members to give you guys some some payback for your support and since i can't create the players i'm always constantly looking for new ways to, to give back to you guys as well to uh show you how much i appreciate you guys so i think that kind of wraps everything up here and i uh yeah we'll see what happens here in this franchise i'm very excited for this to get underway Again, sorry, no simming in this one, but I think there's a lot sort of cover and a lot of potential routes we could take that uh, can alter the course of history for this franchise and, you know, for the future. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.